know, trying to keep up with software architecture, it just feels relentless sometimes, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's like a treadmill. Yeah. Just when you feel like you've got a grip on something, boom, there's a whole new set of patterns, new tech. It's a lot. It really is. And I bet, you know, if you're listening, you probably want to cut through all that noise, get to what really matters without drowning in information. That's a totally fair goal. I mean, even experienced folks feel like they're constantly playing catch up. The sheer amount of stuff out there is well, it's overwhelming. Right. Which is why our sources today feel so helpful. We're digging into fundamentals of software architecture and also pulling from thinking architecturally. Two really solid sources for this. And what grabbed me about fundamentals was uh, the authors thought they'd find like tons of these absolute laws of architecture. Right. But they actually found only a few. Mm -hmm. It makes you wonder, are we just making it more complicated than it needs to be sometimes? Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. The fact they could boil it down suggests there are some, you know, enduring truths under all the latest framework. Core ideas. Exactly. Core ideas that really stick. And that's our mission today, really. Find those foundational concepts, the things that make architecture work, and give you that shortcut to the aha moments, minus the information overload headache. Yeah, we'll be looking at, you know, the heart of making those big decisions, what's really expected of architects, and even, like, how to stay current without just chasing every shiny new thing. Both books are super practical, almost like having a guide, right? Definitely, like a guide through the uh, the architectural jungle. Okay, let's jump in then. The first big law from Fundamentals, it sounds so simple. Everything is a trade-off. Deceptively simple, yeah. But the implications are huge. They really are. I mean, yeah. think about choosing a database. You might go NoSQL for scalability, right? Yeah. But the trade-off, maybe weaker consistency than you'd get with a you know traditional SQL database. Every single choice, big or small, has that give and take. Advantages, disadvantages. And it's not always obvious, is it? Mm -hmm. Fundamentals has this great corollary. If you think you've discovered something that isn't a trade-off, more likely you just haven't identified the trade-off dot yet. Mm, I love that. It's like a little warning sign. Keep digging. Exactly. Because we can get so kind of focused on the shiny benefits of a new tool or pattern. Yeah that we miss the downsides. You know, maybe a team jumps on microservices for the scalability buzz. Happens all the time. Right. But they might overlook the uh, the sheer complexity that comes with it. Managing all those services, distributed demugging, the operational headache. Those are the trade-offs that bite you later. And then just when you think, okay, I've balanced it all, things change. That's the second corollary. You can't just do trade-off analysis once and be done with it. No, definitely not. It's constant. It has to be ongoing because the world isn't static, right? Business needs change, user expectations shift, maybe the infrastructure gets an upgrade, new security threats pop up. Always something. Always something. So a trade-off that made total sense six months ago might be completely wrong now. You have to keep revisiting it. I remember this one project. We went with a simple deployment early on to get to market fast. Okay. Accepted some scaling limits, but then usage just exploded. Nice problem to have. Huh. Yeah, but we had to go back, revisit that trade-off, and build out something much more complex but scalable. The context changed. So that whole idea in fundamentals about mm. a one big trade-off jamboree where you set all the standards once. Pure fantasy. Just a dream, yeah. Because every project is different. Different goals, different constraints, different quality needs, <laughs> you know, performance, security, usability, all those adalilities. Right. Trying to force one set of rules just doesn't work. It ignores uh, the context. So for you listening, trying to get that solid base, yeah, understanding this trade-off thing is, like, fundamental. It really is. It's the fastest way to the core of any architectural choice. It's like uh, planning a trip. Do you pay more for the direct flight to save time? Or take the cheaper one with layovers that eats up a whole day. Exactly. Cost versus convenience. Same idea in software, just yeah. different variables. Absolutely. And knowing you're giving something up forces you to be more um, deliberate, to really ask, what are we gaining? What's the cost? Okay, so from these big laws, let's maybe shift to the more uh, concrete side. What does an architect actually do? Fundamentals list eight core expectations. Yeah, and what's interesting is how many aren't just pure tech. Totally. It paints a much bigger picture. And a lot of senior tech people end up doing these things, even without the official architect title, you know? For sure. So, number one, maybe the most obvious, make architecture decisions. That's the core, right? Defining the big structural pieces. And then 
tied right into that. Yeah. Continually analyze the architecture, which connects back to our trade-off discussion. It's not static. Exactly. It needs co constant checking, adapting. Which leads nicely to number three. Keep current with latest trends. Ah, uh, yes. And thinking architecturally really digs into how hard this is now. The fire hose problem. Totally. How do you stay informed without getting sucked into every single new thing? You know, to filter. And then, number four, ensure compliance with decisions. This is where the people part comes in, right? Oh, yeah. Fundamentals has that great example. The developer bypassing a layer to get like a tiny performance boost, but breaking the architecture. Right. And the architect has to be the one to say, hold on. We need to stick to the plan here. It's about explaining the why. Which brings us to five. Understand diverse technologies, frameworks, platforms, and environments. The red thing. Exactly. That knowledge pyramid idea in fundamentals architects need that wide, maybe inch deep view across lots of tech. Not just deep in one silo. Right, to see how it all fits. But it's not all tech. Mm. Number six, know the business domain. Crucial. Architecture doesn't happen in a vacuum. It has to solve real business problems. An architect needs to get that context to make the right trade-offs for the business. A brilliant technical solution that doesn't help the business is pointless. Pretty much, yeah. And finally, the last two. Lead a team and possess interpersonal skills. The soft skills. So important. Fundamentals spends a lot of time on this. And thinking architecturally echoes it. Influencing, negotiating, handling disagreements. That's often the hardest part. It really can be. I remember having to push for a big architectural change once. Lots of pushback initially. How do you handle it? It wasn't just about the tech design. It was about communication, addressing their concerns, you know, building that buy-in. That's what made it work. It's a huge reminder. Being a good architect is as much about people as it is about diagrams. Absolutely. And even if architect isn't your title, understanding these expectations helps you contribute better, tackle those complex problems. Let's zoom back in on that staying current challenge for a second. Because thinking architecturally really hits on how overwhelming that feels. It does. The sheer speed of change, it's dizzying. Like the ground's always moving under you. Yeah. And what I liked in thinking architecturally was the focus on like building your own personal strategy for filtering all that info. Right. Not trying to drink it all. Impossible. It's yeah. about being selective, finding reliable sources, focusing your learning, intentional learning, not just reactive. And both books give us tools for that. Fundamentals brings up the ThoughtWorks technology radar. Which is great, that hold, assess, trial, adopt model. Yeah, it gives you a structure for looking at new tech, right? Definitely. It helps you move past the hype and make a more um, objective call. Is this mature? Does it fit our context? It encourages trying things out carefully. And thinking architecturally gives us those smell tests for hype which I found really useful. Me too. Like, if there's just excessive marketing buzz. Or it feels like it's trying to be everything to everyone, lowest common denominator stuff. Right. Or if it's being pushed from the top down, but the developers aren't actually excited or don't see the real value. Red flags. Definitely. Those are good heuristics. If it feels forced or adds a ton of accidental complexity without a clear win, maybe step back. Developer enthusiasm, based on understanding, is usually a much better sign. It all comes back to getting knowledge efficiently, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Knowing these signs helps you filter out the noise, avoid chasing every shiny object. And focus your energy on things that are actually likely to deliver real lasting value. Become a smarter tech consumer. Exactly. Differentiate the real innovation from the temporary fads. Okay, so we've got the laws, the responsibilities. Mm. What about the mindset? Fundamentals? Mm. Talks about architectural thinking. Yeah, it's not just what you know, but how you think about problems. Seeing the bigger picture. That's a huge part of it. Focusing on the significant trade-offs, the ones that really define the system's core structure, that helps you separate, say, a big architectural decision like going event-driven from lower-level design choices within that pattern. Right, like choosing event-driven is architectural because it have massive trade-offs, consistency, complexity. Exactly. But also big benefits scalability, decoupling, weighing those is architectural thinking. And that knowledge pyramid idea comes back here too, right? Mm. The developer's deep focus versus the architect's broader view. Yeah, that horizontal view across different domains, you need that breadth to see the connections, evaluate those system-wide trade-offs effectively. And it also means being open to new stuff. Yeah. Not getting stuck in the mud. Right. Fundamentals calls it avoiding frozen caveman thinking. Hmm. I like that.
you know, rejecting something just because you had a bad experience with something vaguely similar years ago or just because it feels unfamiliar. Got to challenge those assumptions about risk. <laughs> Ask why we're hesitant. It's about curiosity, questioning, and underpinning all of this thinking. What have we been talking about the whole time? Trade-offs. Again. Always trade-offs. It's not a checklist. It's a constant mental process. I remember this debate we had choosing between two message cues. One was faster, but maybe less reliable in weird edge cases. The other was rock solid, but a bit slower. So architectural thinking was. Carefully weighing those specific trade-offs against our specific needs. How much data loss could we tolerate? How critical was that extra bit of speed? It wasn't just about the tech specs in isolation. Fundamentals has some great examples too, like balancing extensibility versus security or decoupling versus more complex service contracts. Your concrete examples really make it click, don't they? Yeah, they show trade-offs in action. And that's the core of our mindset, really strategic, holistic view, always evaluating choices and their consequences against the bigger goals. Okay, so wrapping this up, we've really journeyed from that fundamental first law, everything's a trade-off and you have to keep analyzing them. Right, nonstop analysis. To the wide-ranging job of an architect, which is way more than just tech specs. People, business context, leadership, all crucial. And we talked about staying current, but smartly, filtering the hype, yeah. Using tools like the radar or those smell tests. Being critical, basically. So being well-informed in architecture isn't just knowing the latest buzzword. No, not at all. It's about grasping the principles, developing that architectural way of thinking, and getting good at making tough calls with incomplete info, always weighing those trade-offs. The art of the trade-off. Mm. So to leave you with something to chew on, given this constant push for the new and everything we've said about trade-offs, What's one area in software today where you think the trade-offs get overlooked most often? Mm, that's a good question. And what might be the long-term fallout from ignoring those trade-offs? Something to think about as you navigate this crazy, changing world of software. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.